The 1960s were a transformative decade for American cars, bringing sleek designs and powerful engines to the forefront. However, not every model from this era was a hit. In fact, some cars were so poorly received that they become notorious among collectors and enthusiasts. From unreliable engines to questionable design choices, these vehicles struggle to make a lasting impression. But what made these models so unforgettable in their shortcomings? Join us as we dive into the 13 worst American cars in the 1960s that nobody wants back. Number 13. 1962 Pontiac Tempest The 1962 Pontiac Tempest was part of Pontiac's effort to join the compact car market. Produced from 1961 to 1963, the Tempest was introduced as an innovative vehicle with several unique features. It was built on General Motors' wide-body platform and shared components with the Buick Special and Oldsmobile F85. The Tempest stood out with its front engine rear transaxle layout, which aimed to provide better weight distribution and handling. One of the most notable features of the 1962 Tempest was its rope drive system. This flexible drive shaft connected the engine to the rear-mounted transaxle, eliminating the need for a traditional drive shaft hump and allowing for a flat floor. The car was powered by a 3,194 cubic centimeters inline four engine, which was essentially half of a Pontiac V8 engine. Despite these innovations, the Tempest faced several issues. The Tempest's unique engineering led to mechanical problems. The rope drive system was prone to vibrations and reliability issues, and the swing axle rear suspension could cause unpredictable handling. Additionally, the inline four engine was underpowered and not as smooth as competitors' engines. Initially, the Tempest was popular due to its innovative design and compact size, but its popularity quickly declined as mechanical issues became apparent. By 1964, Pontiac redesigned the Tempest, moving to a more conventional drivetrain and abandoning the unique features that had caused so many problems. Number 12. 1961 Chrysler Newport The 1961 Chrysler Newport was Chrysler's attempt to offer a budget-friendly, full-size car. Produced from 1961 to 1981, the 61 model stands out for all the wrong reasons. This car was introduced as a low-price model to attract buyers looking for a large, comfortable vehicle without spending too much. One of the main issues with the 1961 Newport was its boxy and uninspired design. Unlike its competitors, which offered sleek and stylish designs, the Newport looked plain and outdated. It lacked the visual appeal that many car buyers were looking for at that time. Additionally, the Newport was under-equipped compared to other cars in its class. It didn't offer many of the features that were becoming standard in other vehicles, such as power windows or air conditioning. Newport's performance was also a letdown. While it was powered by a 5,917 cubic centimeter V8 engine, the car's heavy weight made it sluggish and not very fuel efficient. This combination of poor styling, lack of features, and mediocre performance led to its decline in popularity. Buyers quickly turned to other models that offered more value for their money. By the mid-1960s, Chrysler had to rethink its strategy and improve the Newport to make it more competitive. The 1961 model remains a reminder of a time when Chrysler struggled to keep up with the rapidly changing automotive market. Number 11. 1963 Ford Falcon Futura The 1963 Ford Falcon Futura was Ford's attempt to offer a stylish compact car that appealed to a wide range of buyers. Produced from 1960 to 1970, the Falcon initially gained popularity for its affordability and practicality. The Futura model, introduced in 61, aimed to add a touch of luxury and sportiness to the basic Falcon. Despite these intentions, the 1963 Falcon Futura struggled to stand out. Its design was considered bland and uninspired, especially when compared to more exciting models of the era. The car featured a simple boxy shape with minimal chrome accents and a plain interior. While it did offer some unique features, such as bucket seats and a slightly upgraded interior, these were not enough to make it a standout choice. Performance-wise, the Falcon Futura was mediocre. It was powered by a 2,783 cubic centimeter inline-six engine, which provided adequate but unremarkable power. 
The car's handling and ride quality were also average, failing to impress drivers looking for a more dynamic driving experience. As a result, the Falcon Futura was often overshadowed by more exciting and better performing cars of the time. The Falcon Futura's popularity declined as buyers turned to other models that offered more style and performance. By the mid-60s, Ford had shifted its focus to other vehicles and the Falcon Futura became less prominent in their lineup. Number 10, 1965 Buick Skylark. The 1965 Buick Skylark was Buick's mid-size offering during the 60s, produced from 61 to 72. The 1965 model year aimed to refresh the Skylark's image with a new design and more powerful engine options. Despite these efforts, the Skylark struggled to capture the market's attention and is often remembered for its shortcomings. One of the unique features of the 1965 Skylark was its introduction of the Grand Sport Package, which included a 6,570 cubic centimeters V8 engine, also known as the Nailhead. This engine provided a significant boost in power, but the car's heavy weight negated much of the performance gains. The Skylark's design was also a mix of old and new, with a boxy shape that didn't quite match the sleek lines of its competitors. The Skylark was criticized for its bland styling and lack of innovation. While other cars of the era were pushing the boundaries of design and technology, the Skylark remained conservative and uninspired. Additionally, the car's handling and ride quality were subpar, making it less enjoyable to drive compared to other mid-sized cars available at the time. As a result, the 1965 Buick Skylark failed to gain popularity and was overshadowed by more exciting and better performing models. Its decline was swift, and by the late 60s, Buick had to make significant changes to the Skylark to keep it relevant in the market. Number 9. 1966 Dodge Polara The 1966 Dodge Polara was part of Dodge's full-size car lineup produced from 1960 to 1973. Named after the Polaris star, the Polara captured the excitement of the space race era. The 1966 model featured a boxy design, marking a departure from the more sculpted look of earlier versions. The Polara came in several body styles, including a two-door hardtop, four-door sedan, and convertible. It offered a variety of engines, with the most powerful being the 6,278 cubic centimeter V8. Despite these powerful engine options, the Polara struggled with performance and reliability issues. Critics often pointed out that the car's handling was too soft, which made it less appealing to those looking for a sporty drive. One distinctive aspect of the 1966 Polara was its C body design. This design was larger and more luxurious compared to the B body used in the Dodge Coronet. It aimed to provide a blend of luxury and performance, but it didn't fully succeed in achieving this balance. By the late 60s, Polaris styling was considered outdated, contributing to its decline in popularity. The decline of the Polara began in the late 1960s as consumers started to prefer more compact and fuel-efficient cars. The 1973 oil crisis further accelerated this trend, ultimately leading to the Polara's discontinuation. Despite its initial promise, the Polara could not compete in a market that was quickly shifting towards smaller, more economical vehicles. Number 8. 1964 Plymouth Valiant The 1964 Plymouth Valiant was a compact car made by Chrysler introduced in 1960 and lasting until 1976. It was well liked at the time for being affordable and practical. The 1964 model had a simple look featuring a horizontal grille bar and vertical taillights. It came with a standard 2.8 liter slant six engine with an optional 3.7 liter engine available for those wanting more power. Although Valiant was popular initially, it faced several problems that led to its decline. One of the main reasons it's remembered as one of the worst cars of the 1960s is due to its poor build quality. The car was prone to rust and its parts didn't last long. Additionally, its performance was unimpressive compared to other cars at the time. While the engines were reliable, they lacked the power and efficiency the drivers wanted. The decline of the Valiant was also due to the arrival of more stylish and powerful cars. The design of the Valiant, which had seemed modern in the early 60s, quickly became outdated. By the late 1960s, consumers were looking for cars with advanced features and better performance, 
which the Valiant could not provide. As sales began to fall in the late 60s, the Valiant's reputation suffered due to its poor build quality and underwhelming performance. This made it less attractive to buyers, contributing to its decline in popularity. Number 7. 1968 Oldsmobile Cutlass the 1968 Oldsmobile Cutlass was a model from General Motors' Oldsmobile brand, part of the Cutlass series that first appeared in 1961. By the mid-60s, the Cutlass name had gained considerable popularity. The 1968 version had a new design that was longer, lower, and wider, which matched the style trends of that time. It offered several engine choices, including a 5.7-liter V8 engine that provided adequate power. However, Despite its initial appeal, the 1968 Cutlass is often regarded as one of the least successful cars in the 1960s. The main issue was its reliability. Many owners experienced frequent mechanical problems, particularly with the transmission and electrical systems. These issues made the car less reliable and more costly to maintain. Additionally, the build quality was subpar, with numerous reports of rust and use of poor quality materials. The Cutlass also faced stiff competition from other muscle cars emerging in the late 1960s. Vehicles like the Ford Mustang and Chevrolet Camaro offered better performance and advanced features. Despite its stylish appearance, the Cutlass couldn't match the performance of these rivals, which led to it being considered less impressive by comparison. By the early 1970s, the popularity of the 1968 Oldsmobile Cutlass began to wane as consumers favored cars that were more reliable and better performing. Its reputation for mechanical problems and low-quality construction made it less desirable, resulting in a significant decline in sales. Number 6. 1969 Chevrolet Biscayne The 1969 Chevrolet Biscayne was part of Chevrolet's full-size car lineup, which was produced from 1958 to 1972. Designed as a budget-friendly vehicle, it primarily served fleet buyers like taxi services and police departments. The Biscayne was Chevrolet's entry-level model, lacking the luxury features found in its more upscale siblings, the Impala and Caprice. In 1969, the Biscayne was offered in both two-door and four-door sedan versions. It was known for its straightforward design, featuring minimal chrome trim and basic interior elements. Despite its plain appearance, it could be fitted with powerful engines, including a 7,000 cubic centimeters V8, which gave it surprising performance capabilities. However, most Biscaynes were sold with smaller, more fuel-efficient engines. The Biscayne was popular in the early 60s, but began to lose appeal by the late 60s. Its utilitarian design and lack of amenities made it less attractive to the general public, who favored more stylish and comfortable vehicles. The rise of compact and mid-size cars also provided budget-conscious buyers with more appealing options. The 1969 Biscayne is often criticized as one of the least impressive American cars from the 1960s due to its outdated design and minimal features. It was overshadowed by more modern and better equipped competitors. By the early 70s, Chevrolet phased out the Biscayne, with the last model being produced in 1972. Number 5. 1961 Lincoln Continental the 1961 Lincoln Continental is a memorable car from the 60s, but not always for the best reasons. Made from 1961 to 1969, this model was initially popular due to its sleek, modern design and its distinctive suicide doors which opened from the center. It was a luxury car designed for the high-end market, featuring a powerful 7,042 cubic centimeter V8 engine. However, despite its early success, the 1961 Lincoln Continental faced several issues that led to its decline. One major problem was its weight. The car was extremely heavy, which negatively impacted its performance and fuel efficiency. Additionally, the unique design of the suicide doors, while stylish, often caused mechanical problems and safety concerns. The complex door mechanism was prone to issues, affecting the overall reliability of the car. As the decade went on, the car's popularity started to decrease. Consumers began to prefer more practical and fuel-efficient vehicles, especially as fuel prices rose in the late 1960s. The high maintenance cost and frequent mechanical issues of the Lincoln Continental further contributed to its decline. By the end of the 60s, it was clear that the car could not compete with more modern and reliable models. Its heavy weight, 
mechanical problems, and high upkeep costs made it less appealing to buyers who are looking for more practical and cost-effective options. Number 4. 1962 Rambler American The 1962 Rambler American, made by American Motors Corporation, was part of the second generation of the Rambler American series, which spanned from 1961 to 1963. This compact car gained popularity early on for its affordability and fuel efficiency, making it a practical choice for many people in the early 60s. The 1962 model had a simple boxy design that was typical of economy cars from that time. It came in several body styles, including a two-door sedan, four-door sedan, and a convertible. One of its standout features was the twin-stick manual transmission, which included an overdrive option to improve fuel economy. Despite its initial success, the Rambler American began to face problems that led to its decline. The car's base engine, a 90-horsepower inline-six, lacked power compared to other compact cars that offered stronger performance. This made the Rambler American less attractive to buyers looking for more powerful options. Additionally, the car's handling and ride quality were often criticized as being below average. By the mid-1960s, the Rambler American's popularity started to wane as consumers began to seek more stylish and powerful vehicles. The emergence of modern, higher-performing competitors further reduced its appeal. By the late 60s, the Rambler American had largely faded from the spotlight, overshadowed by the rise of muscle cars and more advanced compact cars. Number 3. 1963 Dodge Dart The 1963 Dodge Dart was part of the third generation of this model, which ran from 63 to 66. Chrysler created this car to be small and affordable, making it a popular choice for people on a budget in the early 60s. The 1963 Dart featured a sleeker design compared to earlier models. It had a longer wheelbase of about 2,743 millimeters and a wider body. This model came in various styles, including a two-door sedan, a four-door sedan, and a convertible. A notable feature was the new Slant 6 engine, which was known for being both durable and fuel efficient. However, despite these updates, the 1963 Dodge Dart faced several problems that led to its decline. Many people criticized its performance, particularly because the base engine produced only 101 horsepower. This made the Dart less appealing compared to other compact cars that had more powerful engines. Additionally, the Dart's handling and ride quality were often considered below par, resulting in a less pleasant driving experience. As the 1960s progressed, consumers started favoring cars that were more stylish and powerful. This shift in preference contributed to the decline in popularity of the 1963 Dodge Dart. Number 2. 1965 AMC Marlin The 1965 AMC Marlin, originally called the Rambler Marlin, was American Motor Corporation daring effort to break into the personal luxury car market. Produced from 1965 to 1967, the Marlin aimed to rival popular models like the Ford Mustang and Chevrolet Corvair. Its standout feature was its fastback roofline, inspired by the Rambler Tarpon concept car, which gave it a unique look. Built on the mid-size Rambler Classic platform, the Marlin offered a range of engines, including inline six and V8 options. Despite its eye-catching design, the Marlin had a tough time gaining traction. One major issue was its awkward proportions. The fastback design didn't quite mesh with the rest of the car's body, resulting in an oddly shaped appearance. Additionally, although the Marlin was marketed as a sporty car, its performance didn't live up to the hype. The base engine was a 145 horsepower inline six, which fell short compared to the more powerful engines offered by rivals. The Marlin sales figures were disappointing right from the start. Only about 10,327 units were sold in its first year. Its image as a sporty car was further hurt by its relatively high price and lackluster performance. By 1967, AMC attempted to redesign the Marlin, but it was too little, too late. The car failed to capture the market's interest, and production ended after the 1967 model year. The Marlin soon faded from the spotlight, becoming a footnote in automotive history. And at number one, the 1966 Ford Fairlane. The 1966 Ford Fairlane was a mid-sized car produced by Ford from 1955 to 1970. 
the 66 model stood out because it was redesigned with a more angular and muscular appearance. It was offered in several body styles, such as sedans, hardtops, and convertibles. The Fairlane gained popularity due to its powerful engine choices, including the 4,740 cubic centimeters V8 engine and the high-performance 6,400 cubic centimeters V8 engine. However, despite its initial success, the 1966 Fairlane faced several problems that led to its decline. One major issue was its build quality, with many owners reporting rust and mechanical problems, which damaged its reputation. Additionally, the Fairlane's handling was often criticized for being too stiff and unresponsive, making it less pleasant to drive compared to other cars in its class. The Fairlane's drop in popularity was also due to the fierce competition it faced. During the 60s, the muscle car market was thriving, with competitors like the Chevrolet Chevelle and Pontiac GTO providing better performance and more stylish designs. The Fairlane struggled to compete and saw its sales begin to fall. By the end of the 1960s, the Fairlane was overshadowed by Ford's newer models such as the Mustang and the Torino, which offered more modern features and improved performance. Although the Fairlane continued to be produced until 1970, it never managed to regain its previous level of popularity. And that wraps up our list of the 13 worst American cars in the 1960s that nobody wants back. Which of these do you think deserves a second chance? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more automotive content.